Round nine, Mallory Park. And the Honda boys are at it again. But you know the best thing about BSB? Some of the old guard can still occasionally pull something out of the bag. Friday's first Superbike free practice session here at Murray Park. There was a serious incident involving 21-year-old Ollie Bridewell. As a result of injuries sustained in that accident, Ollie was never to regain consciousness. Shortly after, passed away. Ollie Bridewell was a heady mix of lovable traits that combined to make him hugely hugely popular amongst his peers and his friends. He was, without doubt, a seriously talented and committed superbike racer, whose performances improved with each and every outing. And yet, oft times, Ollie could play the clown prince with escapades that really became the stuff of legends. But to me, and to many, many more, I suspect Ollie Bridewell was quite literally a breath of fresh air in this all too frequently serious, serious world. Very, very rarely without that engaging smile on his face, simply to have been in Ollie Bridewell's company was to uh, gain a treasured memento. Ladies and gentlemen around the circuit, please, will you join with his fellow riders, his friends, and all from the British Superbike community in a one minute silence to the memory of Ollie Bridewell. So, Will Rioichi Kianari and teammate Jonathan Ray managed to convert that first and second position on the grid. The Airways UK gets a great lead though as well from Haslam. Haslam gets away well, but it is Jonathan Ray who leads down to Gerard's corner for the first time. HM Plant 1 and 2, and then there is a Suzuki followed by a Snowball Honda that blast into Gerard's a long, long right-hander. Then they pick it up to go straight on into the new chicane. Into the oil, bit of running over the inside of the track there. Oh, dear me, it's a Snowball Honda that was all over the place in the middle of that pack. Was it? Yes, it was. Tom Sykes, Tom Sykes got himself in all sorts of trouble on the Snowbot Venaxia bike. We're at Edwina's already, and really 30 laps around here, that's 90 chicanes and 30 hairpins. That's a lot of nagery places that you can get in all sorts of trouble, Neil McKenzie. It certainly is, and these HM plant Hondas, that launch control working perfectly, but Chris Walker, ever the opportunist, managed to dive underneath Kianari. Jonathan raised the man away at the front. It was Ooh. Tom Sykes that went across the grass, and I reckon he had wet tyres when he came back on the track. Just look at the pressure the Rizla Suzuki is already applied to the HM Plant boys. He split up as we come to the line at the end of lap one. Over the line then, it is Ray from Walker from Kianari. Burn in fourth, he doesn't like this place. Haslam in fifth, he won't like that. Lavia only sixth as we slide straight through into Gerard's corner. It used to be one long right hand, you can see where it dives off to the right, but now goes straight on a little bit and then into this flip-flop chicane. It's quite a tricky little chicane and all the way out of it here, you'll be able to hear the traction control thumping in as they ask for the power onto the back straight and down towards Edwina's. It's a short blast into this chicane then. This is the one where you can trip yourself up if you're not really careful on the way in. Then it's into the S's now section, running through the right, then left up the hill towards the Shaw's hairpin. A really, really difficult last chance saloon for a breaking manoeuvre here. And it's going to be down to the Brave on the way in there. But Chris Walker does like this racetrack. I reckon he did his first ever race here way back in 94, 95 time. And he also raced here at the end of last year, so he's one of the few riders. Back it in, Johnny Ray from... Shane Byrne, burn again. Johnny Ray held it tight that time round. A bit of a change of place here. As through comes Shane, Shaky Byrne on Haslam. Ha, great stuff. Well, Shaky was fourth on the last lap, and I reckon Haslam managed to squeeze past them. But it looked like Walker that had made some sort of mistake going into the new chicane halfway around Gerard. It's business as usual now. Keenar, he still can't get alongside them. Chris Walker, he's hard to pass any weekend. Kianari's brave, brave move brave right into Gerard. Brave move. Through has gone Kianari then into Gerard Gore. It's HM Plant 1 2, but for how long? Because Walker looked like he was going to have a snap straight back at Charlie Chicane. He didn't. 
So, HM Block, one, two, as they come onto the back straight now, along the Stebby straight, down to Edwina's chicane. Well, I'll tell you what, Kianari fancies a bit of this, and through he goes, Ryoichi Kianari, two, three corners and two places for Ryoichi Kianari. He was quickest in warm-up this morning, 56.165 seconds was his time this morning, 56 Point two is burn at this moment in time, but don't be surprised to see this man, Ryoichi Kianari, on the number one bike. And that was the scene of his major disaster here in Britain when he almost knocked himself senseless into the barrier there at that very chicane. He ho holds absolutely no fears of Mallory Park and already has blasted it. 56.027 is his time. Kianari on lap eight, fastest lap of the race, and has already eked out of the front. Kianari out the box this morning in that morning warm up. He was pushing to find the limit at absolutely every corner, so he wasn't going to build up, he wasn't going to mess about. He really wanted to find the limit and get oh, going. Shane Burn, fast Shane Walker. Burn passes Chris Walker in the place that we wouldn't think anybody could out. Walker Walker into the chicane, then the bus stop chicane. Walker just couldn't get on it out of the air, but it looked to me. And uh, taking the opportunity, he was a Stobart on the man. Shane Byrne moving up into third place. So there is a Suzuki goes back a place. It's better go back another one soon as well. Because Leon Haslam is all over Chris Walker. I think Chris Walker has done his tyres. I think Shane Byrne can see Jonathan Ray as another scout because on that last lap, even with that pass on Chris Walker, he was three tenths of a second quicker than Jonathan Ray. And Jonathan Ray, remember, has got a clear track in front of him. Let's take another look at this. He was out a little bit wide, Chris Walker. He got in there a bit too hot. And uh, Shane Byrne, well, just dives underneath him, squirts it in bottom gear down to the bus stop. Oh, Jonathan Ray, where was he off to then? Oh, tell you what, Chris Walker That's nearly landed on Aaron Zanotti. Aaron Zanotti there, oh, oh Aaron Zanotti got the best sounding motorbike out there. Scorpion exhaust. Didn't think I'd be advertising for anybody this weekend. Oh! And that's a mistake that uh, you don't do that and, <laughs> and keep the place. So Haslam runs a little wide and Jonathan Ray goes back through. Well, it is all happening. It's uh, Jonathan Ray under pressure now for Haslam. I guess not happy with his HM plant on the day. He doesn't look so comfortable. He can't do what he wants to do. Struggling a little bit with front grain grip and also struggling with grip getting off the corner. So definitely suffering for the lack of dry testing time here. 21, Tom Tunstall under pressure now from number four, Jonathan Ray, then he'll be followed through by 91, Leon Hazen, 21, Tom Tunstall having a look around, oh dear me, one one side of him, one the other side of him while he wasn't looking, and he's going to have to be careful where he dumps that motorbike, Tom Tunstall just about, but it holds up, it holds up, yes it did hold him up. <laughs> <laughs> Just a fraction, and it only takes a fraction round Mallory Park. A tenth of a second round is a lot. It certainly does. Now comes... That looks like James Buckingham on the key garage motorcycle, and really, these boys, when you're in the middle of a chicane, it, you just can't put yourself in the right place, can you? In a chicane, you're just in the way at some point. There's Jonathan's girlfriend to the right, Neil Tuxworth, of course, team manager, Steve Blackwell in the background there. Here we go, this is a fair, clear track now for both these guys, so let's see what he does in the slap. Oh, Keogh's gone down, Keogh's gone down, Keogh slipped off into Edwina's corner, into the left hand, and Rio Ichi Kianari has dumped it in the dirt, that bike's going nowhere. Neil Tuxworth, that's a grimace if ever I saw one, that bike is full of money, gives you some idea of how much rain we've had here, it's going nowhere at all. You have to try and stifle a smile, don't you, in these circumstances, because right now, it's a Stobart Mentaxia Honda that is on for a race win. Keogh really shouldn't have been allowed to start that again. Front end tucks under, classic stuff. And he's certainly going to get flagged off for that because the bike is just spreading mud onto the track. Oh, and bits of fairing. That could have him off if he's not care careful. Black and orange already, flag is made ready here. Yeah, and Colin Wright is saying they should never allow him to start that. And I have to say, I do agree. He's got to come in, but they're going to give him a whole lap to come round because the black and orange flag isn't till the start-finish line. He can't actually get off the track. He needs to stop somewhere safely inside the track, but he can't get into pit lane on the start-finish rate. That corner has been his nemesis this weekend. Oh, it's been his nemesis forever, isn't it? Because it was that corner he had his biggest off before. He's gone off, he's pulled off. He, yeah. no, he knew he had to. He had to try. He couldn't see that fairing flapping in the wind. No fault of his own. Well, Rio Ichikianari, as he did at Alton Park, throws away a severely possible 25 points. And this man, the man who announced at Alton Park that he hates Mallory Park, he wasn't uh, shy of saying that either, looks like he's going to get his first win <laughs> on the Stobart Van Axia Honda. Unbelievable.
wide. Everywhere. He just doesn't seem to be able to pull the line down in the second half of the corner, does he? The geometry of the thing. Look at this. This is it. Haslam's going to challenge him up into the airfield, I think. This time round, Haslam goes for it. Up the inside. He's going to pull it tight. Oh, he goes wide. Will he be able to get the gas back on? No, he doesn't. Jonathan Ray has been let off the hook again by Leon Haslam. Well, he and now he knows. And now he knows where Haslam's going to pass him. I reckon he should just try and get a bit closer to the rear and turn it underneath him. We're on the last lap. Shane Byrne on the Ventaxia Stobart on that. He'll be stressing. Around. He's got a load of back oh, backers in front of, of him. I'm sure he's stressing now. He's got to shove it up the inside of them, though, into the chicane. I'd still rather be in his position than in these two. And Leon's going to have to do something at the hairpin. It's going to be the hairpin, but they're going to catch up with all these back markers. It's going to oh. be a situation on this last lap where these two are going to come across the back markers all over. Edwina chicane. No, that's all right. They're going to be clearer there, but they might just get them at the bus stop. That's going to be a bit of a nightmare. Shane Byrne has got through, I think fairly safely the race leader 67 is through last lap i remind you through the s's for the last time the john cooper s's to name the most famous man that uh, ever rode around mallory in my point up then to the hairpin and haslam's not going to be able to cut it back under jonathan ray jonathan ray used a very intelligent line coming down into the bus stop that time round. shane Byrne takes the win over the line Shane Byrne takes Stobart Ben Axia Honda's first ever superbike win. Second place goes to Jonathan Ray. Third place goes to Leon Haslam. Yes, says Shane Byrne. I am your man. And the standings then after race one today, Jonathan Ray goes to the head of the field. 282 points from his teammate Ryoichi Kianari. That is an historic point. Leon Haslam still in front of his teammate Gregorio Lavia for third and fourth. Shane Byrne, 212 points now and closing. Leon Camier, Tom Sykes and Chris Walker are your top eight. Despite Shane Byrne wanted to celebrate with vigour, it will be less animate, of course, this weekend. No champagne shower, just a trophy lift. In memory, of course, of Ollie Bridewell. Shane Byrne, though, undoubtedly the winner. Ryoichi Kianari on pole, courtesy of that qualifying. But, oh, and a big jump from Leon Camier on by number two on the bike, Animal.com Honda. And Jonathan Ray blasts into the lead, but here comes Chris Walker up the inside of 36, Leon Camier, while his teammate round the outside, I should say, is Leon Haslam over <laughs> Gregorio Levia. Already I've been tripped up. Two HM plant Hondas and a Rizla Suzuki battling away. And will they all make it through the Charlie Chicane part of the circuit? They do. Onto the back straight. This is Leon Camier. Leon Camier trying to put a pass up the inside. Oh, well, several insides as he comes down into Edwin. Oh, sweeping across the front end. Incredible stuff now as we go up through the S's towards the Shores hairpin. Number four is Jonathan Ray. Your race one winner, courtesy of Rio Ichikinari, throwing it away at Edwina Shikane. When I saw him a little earlier on, he looked so miserable. Oh, and Haslam has forced his way through. Haslam forces his way through into third place with Chris Walker. He's a dogged little Chris Walker around Mallory Park. Somehow this track seems to suit him. And there is a Suzuki when it comes to a fight. I wonder if it will hang on in there a little bit longer today, Neil. Yeah, Shane Burn race one winner in fifth position, Chris Walker does an incredible job off the line. I don't know how he gets these starts. Absolutely unbelievable. But Leon Haslam is on the ball this time. Maybe has a better setup for his Airways Ducati in race two. I know he struggled a little bit in race one, but the two HM plant Hondas oh, has it... ever jumped off the oh, line first. Oh, Leo! Oh, dear me. Uh, he had the rear wheel in the air, about a foot in the air. Looks over his shoulder. Rear wheel, Ichi Kianari. What a natural talent he is. Doesn't matter which way the bike's pointed. He's got his eyes on the corner he's going through, and somehow, magically, it manages to make the corner. And the fact that he went down at that corner in race one didn't affect him one little bit. Ooh! Walker back up into third. Forced his way past Aslam and almost pinched second place from Jonathan Ray. And all the time, still there, 67 is your race one winner, Shane. Shaky burn. Well, he hates Mallory Park. I think he might be going home loving Mallory Park. Gregorio Lavia still hanging in there as well. I'll tell you what, Chris Walker, <laughs> he's worth the admission fee just on his own if he was riding around on his own. There's sparks flying off of him. He is wrestling with that Rizzler.
He is all action. Leon Aslam fighting back, and he does it. Oh, he does that was it. a good move there, but he's run wide. So, he, oh, he feet off the footrest. He couldn't wait to get on the throttle, could he, Chris Walker? He knew that the gap was going to appear. Couldn't wait to get on the throttle. In the end, he outsmarted himself. Yeah, <laughs> tough one there, Haslam. Getting a bit lucky because Chris Walker did have a moment. It let Leon Haslam off the leash. And here comes Byrne now looking at the rear end of Chris Walker, as he did, of course, in race one. Let's take another look at it. Haslam got up the inside, but then uh, really just ran it a little wide. Chris Walker knew the gap was going to appear, got on the gas, <laughs> left Whoa. foot off the footrest. It's quite a big moment, that. It was, yeah. Could have really gone down, and it would have turned him right straight into the wall as well. I reckon the danger man in this bunch is the man second from the back, Tom Sykes, number 66. Look at him behind Levia now. He's looked so good, you know, since warm-up this morning. He's one of the fastest in warm-ups. He didn't get the quickest time in warm-up. He got held up through the hairpin section, but he looked really, really good race setup wise we know the uh, Stobart Van Axia bikes are working well just from Shane Byrne earlier on Shane Byrne won uh, courtesy I suppose of Ryoichi Kianari going out but at that time Shane Byrne was actually one of the fastest on the racetrack we look back at La Villa the Spaniard struggling with that chest injury after that almighty crash he had at Alton Park wasn't so much the crash, it was getting run over afterwards that was <laughs> the problem. Oh, though. down has gone, that's the key garage bike. James Buckingham bike number 56. And Marty Nutt. Marty Nutt, two of the cup riders, and of course Marty Nutt was second in the cup oh, series three. up to that all. That's Aaron Zanotti down as well. No oh dear. So Aaron Zanotti on bike 64 down on the deck, and that looks like another, the SMT-sponsored Yamaha man. We are only talking about how nice that bike sounded when we were on pit wall earlier on. Through goes Kianari. There's going to be a safety car out here for sure. There is. It's on the board. Let's take another look at it then, Neil. I think it's going to be one of those uh, chicane horrors that we use. Yeah, up the inside comes Marty Nutt. Yep, loses the front, wipes out Aaron Zanotti, and James Buckingham falls oh, on Marty Nutt. Marty Nutt. Marty Nutt had that bike roll right over him. Nutt. And that is a heavy motorcycle. No, In comes the car then. Now then, sort yourselves out, boys. This is all about the control of Kianari. It'll be Kianari who is the man that uh, controls this restart. Into the bus stop now. No passing until they go over the start and finish line. And that's quite a long way out of Druids. And look at this, power straight on for Kianari. Kianari gets a good launch. He's got a jump on his teammate already. Green flag at the line now, over the line. Nobody really grabbing any advantage there at all. Byrne not able to quite get with Chris Walker. It surprises me just a fraction. There is Michael Rudder on the Isilon sponsored MSS Discovery Kawasaki. We're at Charlie's already. Your leaders go through. Onto the back straight. Lap 13 of 30, the restart. Down towards Edwina's. Named after the late and very, very nice lady that she was, Edwina Overend as we go down to the bus stop. Look at this, line of Stern Superbikes. What a great sight. It's like Chris Walker and his little ducklings behind Shane Byrne. I'm looking oh! down the inside and I think he does it. Good drive from Shane Byrne out of Devil's Elbow. But look at Chris Walker, he's on the inside coming down to Gerrard's, but he can do nothing about Shane Byrne. Oh, he's run wide though. Oh, he's pulled it back down to the eight. What He was on a, on a bit of a mission out wide there with Shane Byrne, but he's got it all back under control now. And right there, ready to duff up the uh, wayward Chris Walker, we're looking back at him from Shane Byrne, is of course the teammate on the Stobart Van Axia bike, Sykes. Sykes, he thinks better of a, a braking manoeuvre on Chris Walker, mind you, most people do. Brakes and, brakes and Chris Walker, he's usually a bit tough on the old brakes. Well, I think Shane Byrne knew that Chris Walker is late in the brakes into Gerrards and had to make maximum effort in there, and in turn that actually threw him a little bit wide, but he was lucky that Chris Walker didn't go underneath him. Oh, Tom Sykes comes past. Sykes, he now up the inside of Cal Crutchlow. Cal Crutchlow is right there as well. Gregorio Lavia, the Airwave Ducati Teamster to Leon Haslam. The 36 bike has slipped to eighth place at the moment. Been a long time since we've seen him actually finish a race down that far. Crutchlow now in front of Walker. Yeah, well, I think uh, Cal Crutchlow is in a race mode around here as well, isn't he? Cal Crutchlow from Coventry, not a million miles away from Mallory Park. He'll have done a mile or two around here. I think everybody's done a mile or two around Mallory Park. This is one of the favourites. He used to come pre-season testing here. It's a short, sharp little track. Good place for a little bit of a run out. Meanwhile, Jonathan Ray under pressure as they come out of the John Cooper S's. And again, Colin Wright. Tune on the airwaves. Yeah, as you would. Oh, mistake from Ray. Oh, he's going to run wide again, but there's no room. Oh, got him. 
end of the barrier, Johnny Ray has slipped off. Well, just like Alton Park, Ryuichi Kiyonari crashed out in one race, Jonathan Ray in the other race. That's his girlfriend. And Colin Wright can't believe what he's just seen. That was really a bit of a tangle up. Jonathan Ray has been red flagged. It's a red flag, so it must be a result there. And that'll be because the safety barrier has been damaged. And so therefore, Stuart Higgs, the race director, has decided that because the safety barrier has been damaged in that place, it's too dangerous to continue without a proper safety barrier. Let's take a look at this from a different angle. He we made that front end chatter. He was never going to make it. Slid it in motocross style straight into the barrier. It's the only time you can say if that safety barrier hadn't been there, he might have actually made it. Which means the result will go one lap back. Which, if it goes one lap back, of course, he will be in the results, as far as my understanding of that is concerned. Well, we're told that the result is number one, Kianari, Haslam second, Shane Byrne third is what I'm being told at the moment. So red flag out, Annabelle, Annabelle Matthews there at the start line holds out the red flag. And we'll wait to see whether the results are actually confirmed at that. In comes Ryoichi Kianari on bike number one. He will be the race winner, whatever the controversy. And recovers from that slip up at Edwina's in race one to take the race two win. It only remains to be seen how the rest pan out behind him. Kianari is the winner, Leon Haslam is second, Shane Byrne is third, Tom Sykes fourth, Cal Crutchlow fifth, great result for the Rizzo Suzuki's, Chris Walker sixth, Gregorio Lavia eventually comes up to seventh, Michael Rutter gets eighth on the MSS Discovery Cowers, Zaki, that's how he looks at the moment, so Jonathan Ray is out of the results, we will like, wait to see if he scores any points at all in the order, I don't think he will actually from that fall, let's take a look at the championship standings then, after that, what a shock Ryoichi Kianari re-establishes himself at the top of the tree Jonathan Ray second, as it was at the beginning when we came to Mallory Park from Leon Haslam in third, Gregorio Lavia in fourth, that's how we started Shane Byrne, Leon Camia, Tom Sykes and Chris Walker our oh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, respectively. Shane Byrne closing right in now on Gregorio Lavia there in fourth place. 